This woodland is uh, in Borrowdale, very near Derwent Water, uh, and at the sort of height of the autumn colour. Uh, and when I was first looking around this area, I had uh, no great expectations that I was going to make a picture, and I thought that if there was going to be one, it would probably be of the trees, uh, uh, maybe with a tight lens and a, a fairly a graphic kind of composition. Yeah. And then, uh, as I was walking around, found uh, th these old logs and noticed, uh, first and foremost, that there were some rather charming uh, details on them. If we look closely, you can see these tiny fungus. And uh, this is at 100% on screen, uh, still wet from the rain. Uh, rain wasn't that heavy that day, but it was there all the time. Mm. It brings out colours as well, the, the, the rain does just after it's... It does. The the richness of the colour is never better than after rain, and, and especially uh, in, in the autumn somehow. Uh, and the greens seem more luminous, perhaps because they're uh, being contrasted with the reds of uh, and the yellows of the autumn colour. Uh, and I, I think that's, a, as a colour study in itself, it, it's worth doing. Now, when I initially saw this log, I, I thought there was a, a chance of using this Y shape in some way. Uh, I do love that that sense of gesture. I use it quite a lot in my compositions of either cupping, embracing, or uh, or uh, as it were, as a generator of, of kind of energy. Yeah. Um, and initially, I set the camera up with that vertical uh, composition in mind. And as I did so, I I, mean, I actually made two or three uh, exposures, and then felt slightly dissatisfied, as if the the story was incomplete. And when I, I stepped back and looked at it again, and I realised that a lot of what I enjoyed about the landscape was uh, the the way it opens out into the hillside in the distance. I knew I wanted to avoid the sky because the sky would create probably white uh, highlights that that would be too distracting. But I was able to here use a wide lens and incorporate the the, the blue hill. Uh, in the distance, blue because of the uh, uh, the way that that colour naturally arises with distance, and um, and because of the ambient light, uh, the natural colour of the ambient light, uh, and use that as as cre a way of creating more depth in the image. There's quite a few strong lines leading up towards that corner as well, or or down towards the log. Uh, the well, direction. I think the, the composition works in that way, doesn't it? I, I, th I think we can see that there's a there's a kind of natural spring springing point from it because of the Y, um, but the this log here and then the one beneath it both move to the right and they're picked up by uh, the tree that that's lying slightly on its or, or, or angled on its side here. Uh, towards the, uh, as it were, the hole in the woods and the uh, the tree-covered hillside in the distance, uh, and that's important because I think that that is a, a kind of basic narrative, uh, visually speaking, uh, for the image. That balances, but essentially it's moving from left to right. Uh, the other thing I'd like to talk about w is is that of uh, gesture uh, and uh, relationship. Uh, this is something that, that lands as landscape photographers, I, I think we can all do with cultivating, which is realizing that that the natural world has its expression of the human condition, and if we can tune into that, we can we can make some associations. Of course, I think ultimately it's for the viewer to determine whether that has meaning for them, but certainly the way that this, uh, the Y-shaped log lies uh, rather gently on uh, its kind of sister or brother log beneath it, um, and, and that they, they're in, a, in, in alignment, so to speak, and then there's an, another one in the distance. This is a, a strong indicator to me of some kind of relationship. There's, there's uh, almost an intertwining of the two, even though, yeah. even though they're not quite. There's... Not quite, but there is a, there is a, there's a slow, almost, you, you, perhaps it's fanciful, but a tenderness about it, and uh, I like that. Um, clearly that log, these logs have been cut at some point or another by somebody with a chainsaw, uh, and, cut, and the end part's carted away, but, but even so, the natural world has, has managed to soften those edges, and leave uh, a strong sense of nature taking its course and uh, and the the cloak of of mosses 
uh, again further softens um, the appearance of the logs, but also you know speaks of uh, of the natural processes that are, are, are constantly ongoing. I mean, you can argue that this is a picture of life and death. Uh, you know, the the logs are decaying and dying, and the trees in the distance are alive. And while they're in their their kind of autumn, soon to be uh, wintry uh, appearance, um, they'll be back next year, springing again. And uh, th there's there's something quite poetic, about, I think, ab about that. Um, and uh, and it's it's uh, just a constant reminder of of the processes of the natural world, which is a, a theme that's, that I've pursued um, really ever since I've been a photographer. Uh, I think process, uh, change, energy, um, life and death, um, and, uh, and that includes decay. And I always think it's interesting that even in uh, stages of decay, trees can express a tremendous amount of vitality.